Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming schedules and content and on social media at Varsity Media. Since 1989, Arena Graphics has been a leader in Purdue. Specializing in serving schools, clubs, small businesses, or large corporations, Arena Graphics can help you promote and other promotional products. Ask us about setting up a team or business web store for easy ordering and user-friendly fundraising options. Search us on the web at arenagraphicsny.com. Arena Graphics, your gear starts here. Now is the time to order a college recruiting video with Varsity Media. College recruiting videos can save thousands of dollars on college tuition and help land a spot on the team. Our videos include your best plays set to music with spot shadowing effects to help you stand out from the competition. Contact Varsity Media today and mention this ad to save 15%. Call 516-403-2050 or email jeff at varsitymedia.net. From Warren King Field here on the campus of Garden City High School, it is the 139th edition of the Woodstick Classic. As this afternoon, the Indians of Manhasset, the Indians of Manhasset, come to town with their 9-0 record against the Trojans of Garden City, who are 7-3 on the season. Today's Woodstick Classic is sponsored by Arena Graphics, as well as String It Up and the Breakout Goaltending Group, along with Bad Fish Charters. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Dylan Butler here alongside Mike Hungerford, and it should be always a fun matchup between these two teams. They've played for a very long time, and Mike, uh, we'll get to these things right away. We could show you the, the tail of the tape between these two teams and not a lot separating these two teams uh, from the very beginning of this back in the 30s until now. Yeah, the long-standing you know, rivalry between the two teams, the greatest rivalry, I, I would say, in, in scholastic uh, boys lacrosse history, played the longest. I know some guys in Maryland might have a different opinion, but here in Long Island, we think it's the greatest. We'll show you the players to watch. Pulling right now, they're three and oh, or excuse me, they're number three in the country, nine and oh in the season. And you see their guys right there. Cal Gerard impacts the game on such a high level. Facing off, you see his numbers, 84.5%. He's going to Duke. And Jack Malholland, part of that uh, three jacks of the defense uh, going to Dartmouth. Great players. I mean, on both ends, very sound. Going to make very few mistakes. And for Garden City, the Trojans, Gerard. And to your right, it is Weber. And a clean win for Gerard as we get going. Off the faceoff win by Gerard. He's used to face off against the pole, but they get a good turn back, Garden City, and they got the ride on here and see if Manhasset can get it out before the 20 count. A little flip back, and now they do. Early offense. No, says Aiden Haggerty. Aggressive ride there from Garden City. I think that's what you're going to see. You know, try to turn the turn the tables. Like, how do you balance the faceoff game? You know, Dylan. How do you how do you get back to 50-50 playing against a guy like Couch Rod? How do you steal possessions? Maybe riding is the answer. Now, last year's matchup, it was separated by one faceoff. Gerard won one more than Jack Cascadden, but Cascadden, who's now at Cornell, won the last one, and that helped uh, Garden City get the overtime winner. Sure, and it's not, it's not always how many you win, it's when you win them. Here's Haggerty from X, pops it back out top. And this is the fun matchup, one of the fun matchups. First shot, and there's the initial save as well. Mondiello had the shot and the save by Fargione. Good start by Fargione. I liked, his, I liked how aggressive he was there to that ball. He saw it clean and got after it. Good stick check from behind. 
as it was taken away from Garden City. Look at this battle at midfield. First flag of the game is thrown as well. And we'll have our first man up opportunity. Let's see what this call is, Mike. I think you're going to have a push with possession. 30 seconds. But no, it's a one minute. No. It's going to be a slash. Just saw the... Okay. My, my mistake. I apologize. Field. I think a little nerves going for both teams in the beginning, right? I mean, has got a shot. Great save by Fargione to get 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 the always want to get the first one if you're a goalie. Right? Get a little something under your belt, and uh, a little nerves in the middle of the field by both teams, and uh, cause he's got the first man up here. So Jack Mulholland in for the slash. One minute. So GC with the first man up of the game, and there's James Paisley to restart. On top to Fennell. He can be in so many different places, Mike. It impacts this offensive side of the game, does Fennell in, in a lot of different ways. Sure, he's a natural midfielder. He's a college midfielder, a two-way type of a guy in college, I believe. But in high school for that team, offensively, he can play man up. They got a little lock on him right here, it looks like. A little ghost lock. But he can impact the game. He can play attack in high school. You know, He can do things left-handed from the attack spot. He can shoot it. Low to high, M with the save. Ground ball right in front of him. The rebound goes, and it's a goal. Paisley gives Garden City the one nothing lead on the man-up goal. There it is. Good old Nassau County scrap right there. Two teams bowing out in front of the goal. It makes the first save. It makes the initial save and can't corral the rebound. Great first save. And the ball's loose in front of him. Hey, watch 50 come in. Great job by Paisley. So GC one for one on the man up, and the Trojans take the early one nothing lead. Back to the faceoff X. Gerard wins it. Smart play by Gerard right there. He just drew it back to his wingman who was uncovered, and uh, you know was able to get that ball back to him. But Scotty stepped out of the box a little early, so that's a free clear and easy walk it over there for Manhasset. And this is what I was going to say to you earlier. Uh, didn't get the opportunity, but I think this is what this is this side of the field, Mike. For me, this is going to be a lot of fun because it's a balanced attack. Now there is no Terenzi, right? There's no Dawson Riley guys who uh, had huge roles last year in this game and in previous years. But it's a balanced Manhasset attack against some really really talented uh, defensive middies and poles as well. Sure, you see Cole Weber right now. Looks like got Cole Weber on on uh, on uh, on Peterson. Peterson headed to Harvard. I, I was a, a big fan a year ago. He's, he's so smooth. Here he is. Peterson gets downhill and great bat, stick check from behind. Uh, as you mentioned, it was Weber to do so. Sure, that's a good matchup. Those guys know each other a long time. They're also uh, teammates on club, I know, together. So a little, little matchup right there. Two guys who are very familiar with their, each other's games. It's Danny Cohen, the sophomore, to put the ball back into play. And as it tries to likes to work at a circle or, or a one three two type look. There's Blake Cascadin, one of a handful of D middies. Of course, Jack Cascadin's younger brother. Yeah, but has to be a mix of like free flowing offense, generally starting from the top with their midfielders into maybe a little bit of a bunch of few really really timely set plays. So far, every shot is contested, right? Like everything is just getting battled for today. It's the wood stick. Yes, sir. Nothing's, there's going to be no free lunch here. <laughs> no. There'll be no free lunch here. No. Nothing will be easy. Well, we might have free lunch later. We'll find out. I'm expecting it. Pizzeria G, <laughs> halftime food review. That'll be a lot of fun. Ball gets back to him. He's chased down and hit by Gibbons. Now there's an open net, and it's dunked in. Tommy boy, Tommy Esposito. And it's 2 nothing, Garden City. Just a scrap out goal there by, by Garden City off the turnover. Manhasset got the ball to him and they had a little, little, little mishap on the clear. As you can see here, they come up with it. And yeah, you get the ball back to him. And Great here check comes though, the hunter. A little check right there. You see going out of the picture when he threw that ball when he curled to his left hand. I believe that was actually the goal scorer, Esposito, right? Has a little check on the on the uh, on the defenseman as he as he curled away as he rolled from pressure, forced that bad pass to him, and Gordon City ma manufactures a goal. Gerard goes forward 
with this faceoff. It's three for three, but this is exactly what Steve Fennell, the Garden City head coach, said. How do we minimize the faceoff deficiency? Well, it's three faceoffs for Manhasset, but the score is two nothing for Garden City. Sure, I think you know Manhasset had one really good look at the goal, um, and, and Floyd Jones was up to the task. And here we go, dodging from up top. Goal on extended. Looking to get topside is Haggerty going to Villanova. You see Garden City's trying to hedge with those adjacent players. And Manhasset players may have to fade a little bit more or get through to get that adjacent defender away from crowding their dodge. Cargiulo chased down by Aiden Considine. Cargiulo's had a great year so far. Switching to his left is Peterson. Back up top. That's Luca Petroselli. Four is Haggerty. They got a little bit of a you know, two-man game. Haggerty. Hammered on the way in. The shot does, in fact, end up getting the Fargione. And here comes a quick clearance and some numbers for Garden City. Great job by Weber. And here's Cooper Krause. That shot blocked in front too. Another fortuitous bounce to Paisley. Another shot blocked in front. This is NHL playoff-esque. Paisley again. Good, de good decision there to pull it out, good organized. Pace of play, I think, you know, I think Manhattan would like to go a little faster and Gardens would like to go a little bit slower. And, uh, not too slow. You could grind yourself down, but right now things are very comfortable with Garden City at 2 nothing, and, you know, we're more than halfway through the first quarter. Up top is Archer. Another guy who's been a big part of this game. Nice look down low. Turnaround shot and a goal. Michael Burkery. And a late flag as well. It's 3 nothing, Garden City. Tic-tac-toe passing there by the Trojans. Good job off the dodge with the throwback. And a really nice look inside. We have a flag down too. See, they throw the adjacent. A nice little pass right there. It looked like he was winding up. It looked like that Paisley was going to wind up and shoot it. But then he had that little, that little lever touch pass, right? Inside. And a good finish. And now as a result of that unnecessary roughness penalty against Mulholland, you don't have a face-off, which in this one is huge. And Manhasset will call a timeout. And will take it with them as well. Garden City. A 3-0 lead over Manhasset early goings here of the 139th edition of the Woodstick Classic right here on Varsity Media. Looking for a competitive edge on the field? Look no further than String It Up. Our expert stringers have years of experience in crafting the perfect pocket for your playing style. Whether you prefer a high pocket or a low pocket, we've got you covered. Get the edge you need to dominate the competition. Visit String It Up at 41 Stewart Avenue in Huntington Village or on the web at www.stringitup.com. We welcome you back to Garden City. Dylan Butler, Mike Hungerford here with you. Didn't get a chance before the start. We got right into it. Let's show you the starters first for the visitors from Manhasset. And the Indians roll out an attack line of Connor, Haggerty, and Colin, your first midfield of Peterson, Cargiulo, and Mondiello, and your close D of the three Jacks, Lamarca, Mulholland, and Morrison. Back into play, another man up opportunity as Mulholland had that unnecessary roughness penalty. Big chance here, Mike, for Garden City to really extend out this early lead. Yeah, I guess the officials thought that was, yeah, was you know, way beyond the goal, beyond the scoring of the goal to give no face off rather than being a continuation. Oh, looked like getting ready to line that one up was Andrew Adamanelli, right? As Archer will QB from up top. Feed to Paisley, and that shot is wide. 
I like this set with Paisley and, and Adam and Ellie and Fennell as the, as the outside shooters. And Archer is a little bit of a distributor. I think they got their players in really good spots. Coach Fennell's got them in their, in their place to their best strengths, you know? Here's Archer up top. Lehigh commit. Nice look. The other side. Overhand shot. Im the save. Denying Fennell. Now Fennell up top. Time and space. Archer gets the goal. It somehow snuck in another man up goal. And Garden City has a 4 0 lead. Oh, Fennell gets a great little dodge on man up. It gets underneath and him gets a save, but the ball goes behind the goal. Fennell you know, smartly picks it up and keeps it moving. There's that little dodge to his right hand, tries to tw use a little twister to get it to go, but he collects the rebound. What an athlete! And gets it up top to Archer. Him gets a piece. And it just crosses the line. Yeah, Goes great in. look yep. Yep. by little, our camera guys. Little English on there. Great camera work by the, by the uh, Vossi Media camera crew here. And how about this start? Garden City, a 4 nothing lead. All indications coming in, Mike, were for multiple reasons. Garden City was the underdog as Gerard goes backwards, wins his fourth faceoff. Yeah, I, I said that to some people and asked me if they thought I thought that Garden City was the underdog, and I said, yeah, I said yes, mainly just because of the situation, of nothing else than the faceoff situation with with Cal Gerard, you know, being so good at the X, and 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 Garden City in their faceoff game is you know it's a work in progress. They're trying to figure out, and they're going with they're going with you know with the pole today. Peterson, that bull dodge was so strong. Lost a shoe and a sock. So a wardrobe malfunction for him. Yeah, see, I don't think going with Weber is a bad move on the, on the draw because you want him to play up top against Peterson most of the time anyway. So it keeps him in the part of the field where you want him rather than him trying to bump up and bump somebody back down. So it's, it's a natural, you know, movement. Manhasset this season hasn't had many deficits like this. In one of their bigger games of the year, that battle of the sound against Ariane, well, they rolled the blue wave. And I don't even know if there's been a quarter. We'd have to look on the great B Lax 8 website if they've even been shut out in the first quarter. I would highly doubt it. In and out of the stick, and here comes Garden City the other way. Great decision, great ground ball, and great decision to go back with it. And Fargione, part of the clearing game as well. And that's who you want to get the ball to. Fennell at midfield. Here comes Fennell, downhill. Fennell! Stevie boy! Five nothing, Garden City. Owen walked in with the ground ball, starts it up, and Fennell gets the ball, and they let him have it, and this is, this is just, this is downhill. This, he's playing football right now. He's going to the goal, and he's going for the end zone. <laughs> Same thing, and you saw him do a lot of that in the fall, and, and that's what an ACC level athlete looks like running downhill with a ball in open space. And Duke Commit was a Thorpe Award winner in football. That tells you he was good on the gridiron. That is no doubt about it. We just see why he's so great on the lacrosse field as well. Challenge here for Manhattan is just, you know, you just got to make one play at a time. The Garden City guys are playing with a little bit of house money in the first quarter right now, 5 nothing, so they can play a little bit, you know, uh, you know, play a little a little more, I wouldn't say wild is the wrong one, but extend themselves a little bit more knowing they have a five-goal lead. And the Manhattan guys have to make the play that gets the game pressure off them, I believe, and put the pressure back on Garden City. 5 nothing start for Garden City. Amazing stuff, and it's five different goal scorers as well. As now it's Cargiulo, the UMass commit trying to get downhill. Somehow we're inside the final minute now of this first quarter. Here's Mondiello. Cargiulo had a great game against Darien, the game we covered earlier this season. Little hitch, top side, shot off the mark. The attempt by Cargiulo. 
can see right now that the Mass guys aren't super comfortable offensively right now. The, 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 the pressure from Garden City and the matchups and the athleticism. Here's Connor. Question mark, and that's a shot wide of the mark. Good, good looking dodge here by Connor, trying to get that five by five or seven by seven and, and just missed a low corner. And a whistle. I think the clock might have been moving a little bit. Try to get that squared away. Yeah, you can see on our on our screen we got 30, or we had 35. Good thing is the way Garden City does it here, they have the at the at the scorers table over there, and that table over there, they have the, the they keep the scoreboard there, so it's easy to adjust. That's a nice little, you know. And that's even better for us. And we're up here in the press box. We got here, plenty of room. Warm and dry. <laughs> 36 seconds is what it was reset to. She's very Here comes Connor. Connor spins, jump shot wide of the mark. But what you like here, Mike, I think, is you're getting into some fluidity on your attack, which you haven't had the rest of this first quarter. Yeah, they're trying to test all the matchups, right? See if they can beat it, what matchup they can beat, you know? Ooh, in and out of the stick. Somehow Connor gets it back, loses it again, gets whacked a few times. 15 seconds left. Here comes Peter uh, Peterson the other way. Yeah. Top shelf. Huge goal for Manhasset as Peterson buries it. You saw Peterson's athleticism right there. The Harvard commit. Just getting downhill and squeezing up to the short side of the goal. He's here on the replay, Dylan. He's got that short stick, which he has had the short stick all quarter. He dodges the pole, the slide. And puts it short side in the knot hole there on uh, on Forgione. Big goal for the Harvard commit. His ninth of the season. Makes it 5-1. Psychologically, that's got to be important, right? 5-0 to 5-1. It's only a goal difference, but there's no zero on the scoreboard. As Gerard gets the ground ball off his face-off win. Sure, you just need your best player, best player right there. In my opinion, their best player just made a play, you know, and and it got a little. Everybody take a deep breath, getting the getting the huddle now at the end of the quarter, and there's no four, there's no four point shot. One quarter in the books here in the 139th edition of the Woodstick Classic, and it's Garden City with a 5-1 lead over Manhasset. You're watching it all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Looking for a competitive edge on the field? Look no further than String It Up. Our expert stringers have years of experience in crafting the perfect pocket for your playing style. Whether you prefer a high pocket or a low pocket, we've got you covered. Get the edge you need to dominate the competition. Visit String It Up at 41 Stewart Avenue in Huntington Village or on the web at www.com. We welcome you back to Warren King Field on the campus of Garden City High School. Dylan Butler, Mike Hungerford here with you, our entire varsity media crew. It's a 5-1 lead for the Trojans of Garden City. And let's take a look at uh, the guys who lined up to start this game for the Trojans. And it is Paisley, Paisley Ottomanelli, and Archer on attack. Fennell, Gibbons, and Danny Medjid as well. And your close defense, some terrific athletes there, man. Mal Malahi going to Navy. We've got Matty Kephart going to Princeton and Luke Lasseur. He's a little bit too young to go anywhere yet, but uh, he will no doubt uh, be a Division I player as well. Head coach Steve Fennell in his 17th season, a 1991 graduate of Garden City High School. Yeah, and those are the three defensemen in your list right there, but there's a couple more guys that get in the game that are real good. Very deep in the defensive spot. And you s back to the faceoff X. And again, there is a size discrepancy here as Cole Weber towering over Cal Girard. Not a talent discrepancy, though. That is for sure. Beauty of the sport of lacrosse. And Girard gets bowled over, still gets the faceoff win. And now let's see, after that goal, right, does that give the Indians a little bit of juice here to start the second quarter. Weber went with the uh, with the single man move right there and just try to blow him up a little bit, but uh, how quick did Cal Girard get to his feet and get to the ground ball? 
I don't think there's anything you could do to him that he hasn't see, already seen at some point in his days facing off. Listen, the last couple of years, he had a similar size discrepancy with big Jack Cascadin, right? Dealing with him. And obviously he's more of a craftsman uh, like he is. That is what he does up at Cornell with a couple other Long Island guys as well. Great feed to the crease. And there's the finish. And back-to-back -back goals for Manhasset as the Indians slice into their deficit. Looked like that was Cardulo with the goal. That was a set play that I've seen Manhasset run before. And the main look on the play, the Garden City covered the main look on the play, but I, I think what happened there was we see the replay. Not a lot of great ball pressure right there. He's able to look, and I think the steel man on the play is Cardulo. He became the slip down the back pipe, and he became open. So they covered the front side of the play, but the, the, the setter, the sealer, becomes open on the back pipe. So Liam Connor with the pass and the assist, his 17th assist of the goal of the year, and Cardulo with the dunk in front, goal number 19. Back to Lapina. They're giving, you know, uh, Cal that reverse exit right there, pulling that ball back to his wing. They've had that wing uncovered, and uh, he's going to do that all day if that's what you give him. That's going to that's almost a little bit too easy. I think what Coach Fennell will do is adjust and maybe zip her down and cover that wing and, uh, and, and, and make him have to battle against the pole a little bit more. Yeah, we've seen a lot of different looks, right, uh, against Gerard this year. The double pole, the, in this case, kind of the triple pole as well, right, at the faceoff X. Uh, but there's been no responses for a guy who's averaging just under 85% on the faceoff X. Unheard of numbers, realistically, you know. It's just such, such a dominant situation. Getting downhill. There's a look to Connor at X. Back out, right off the goal. Cardulo spins. Good defense by the Trojans. That was Considine, one of the D middies on him. Gonzi will employ a good number of short stick D middies, and, and they all kind of look alike to me. It's why yeah. I, I keep checking the roster for the numbers. Well, Considine's a little bit bigger. Yep. But you've got Wukta, you've got. Blake Cascadin, you got Cooper Krause as well, all part of that uh, defensive defensive midi tandem that the Trojans employ. When, when you play the short stick D midi role, you, you know you're going to get dodged a lot. People are going to attack the short sticks. Connor jump shot, just wide. Good help slide there by by Garden City, bringing a little bringing a man to the ball to help, and, and Connor shot that ball wide. And here's Danny Colon, just a sophomore. You're a short stick. You're going to get dodged a lot in any offense, especially against a good team. And it isn't necessarily if you can play the ball correctly, but after you get slid to, can you recover? Can you find your place in the defense and not give an opening up? Can you get back in the defense? Because you're only covering the ball one-sixth of the time. Mondiello back up top to Peterson. Peterson goes high, and Fargione makes the save. Good save by Fargione, nice and clean, and he throws the ball right where the shot came from. Textbook play right there. And Garden City concerned about possibly getting a turnover there and not getting the clear. They call the timeout. Good timeout call. Seek possession right there. You had a good stop on defense. Good decision. And we'll take it with them as well. 9.01 left here, second quarter. It's the 139th edition of the Woodstick Classic right here in the Varsity Media Sports Network. And your family looking for a great day of fishing without having to travel too far? Well, Bad Fish Charters is the place for you. Conveniently located in Huntington Harbor in Huntington, New York, Bad Fish Charters is fully outfitted with all of the gear you need to have a great day on the water with your friends and family. Each boat is spacious with an enclosed cabin, equipped with all Coast Guard mandated safety equipment, fully licensed and insured. Bad Fish Charters offers full and half day fishing charters accommodating groups of up to six passengers. To to book your next fishing trip, give Kevin a call today at 631-681-4290. We welcome you back to Warren King Field on the campus of Garden City. I want to remind you to check out our halftime food review. Man, does that look delicious. Pizzeria G right here in the heart of Garden City. Mike, you've not had... Pizzeria G yet, so I'm so excited to, to have that experience for you. We're going to see in just a little while, nine minutes and four seconds of game time, we're going to see it pass the test. 
That picture passes the test. That's I'm cool. getting hungry by one. that picture. It's a good looking picture. Go back to game action. Looks like the weather's improved here a little bit in Nassau. If yeah, I thought there was a window, Mike, from like four to seven where it was going to be clear, and then it was going to, which is I, you know, right in the heart of, of, uh, of this Woodstick Classic. So maybe the gentleman behind us here in the press box, Jack White, uh, the legend here at Garden City, maybe he has something to do with it. Looking down from above, slide comes, ball on the carpet after the attempted swim move, but it goes right to Andrew Ottomanelli. It was a tough day here in Nassau County. If you're not from Long Island or watch from somewhere far away, it was, uh, I thought the world, you had to build an arc today. The world was coming to an end a little bit. Oh, look at Lapina coming with some heat. And Garden City loses it. Mulholland gets it up to Lapina. One of the best short stick D middies around. And he's getting chased by Fennell. They get to clear. And now here comes Manhasset on the offense. Trust what Manhasset needed was a good possession. You know, strong defensive play, get the turnover and, and get it back to your offense. And also we'd be remiss if we didn't mention there was a moment of silence before the start of this game for veteran official Vinny Oliva, who actually was supposed to be on this game, was looking forward to it, unfortunately passed away today. So our condolences to the Oliva family and uh, everyone affected uh, by that tragic loss. Terrible, I found out about it. It's just terrible. I know Vinny very well, and I don't know his, his good matchup right here. Fennell and Cargiulo. Yeah, Cargiulo swims inside. Cargiulo gets a step. That one is blocked as well. Trying to get Fennell off here. See if Manhaska beat the whistle here and get, the, get a six on five for a brief period of time. Nice move inside. Hands free, bouncer. And that's wide of the mark by Cargiulo. Paul Jones pretty stout now. They're gonna have to those row shots from range. You're gonna have to really beat him. I think to score. He's pretty good from that that distance. And you know suddenly too, the shot discrepancy as Peterson goes right in to Fargione's stick. Looks like Golden State was playing zone right there. They have played zone over the course of the year. And here comes GC, a little unsettled. Good job by Archer to bring it back out. You remember his brother as well, Pierce, among a, a litany of really terrific short stick D middies. And Jack led Garden City in points last year. That included a hat trick in that state championship win over Canandaiga Academy. That was at Hofstra as Garden City captured their 10th state championship championship, excuse me, their eighth state championship, third only behind West Genesee's 15 and Ward Melville's 10. Here's Fennell. It's Esposito from behind the cage. Fennell sets the screen. He gets it back. If they could, if they could defend Fennell with the short stick, you know, well, Pete is not on him now, but if they could defend him. A oh, great skip pass and a terrific save by M. Climbs the ladder to deny Ottominelli. Great skip pass, Ottominelli the ball, took a little while to come out of his stick and I think Im did a great job of being able to like dial it in and see it. If Ottominelli could have got it out just a little bit quicker, it might have surprised him a little bit more, but great job by him sitting in and making that save, no rebound clean and pitching up the field. And now again, can they capitalize on the, on the substitution they weren't able to but they'll go settled now what I was saying before that early on there was a big discrepancy Mike in in terms of shots and that only tells a little bit of the story but right now it's a one shot advantage on that last one for Garden City that's how much Manhasset has worked their way back into this game and there's another one Owen Walker with the with, with the rebound there the Garden City gets the clear short possession from Manhasset low angle yeah, not like sure to, that's what. I'd like to see him work, work the ball a little bit more, you know? However, they'll get it right back. Cool Ward there. Attempted skip pass, deflected off a stick. A huge hit laid by Aiden Haggerty. And there's a GC player down still off of that hit. Looks like it's Matty Kephart who is down. And he'll get some assistance as well. 
the officials have called the game fairly tight, and, and if they're not going to throw a flag there, and they thought they thought that was you know from a shoulder, and was not illegal in any way. We mentioned the Lapina family before, or excuse me, the uh, uh, Paisley, James Paisley, the attackman. How about this? This is super cool. Uh, we'll show you to you now. James Paisley, right, a senior on this team. Check this out. That's Grandpa. That's Tom Paisley. He lives right behind us here on Rockaway Avenue. The pregame was at the house. Uh, Dad also. Now, uh, you see Tom Paisley there on your right, captain of the 1952 team, was the MVP, 89 years young today. And Dad Ian as well played for Garden City as well. That's what we talk about in games like this, right? It's the legacy from generation to generation. Sure, back in the 50s, you had you know, a small number of teams competing in Nassau County, Manhattan and Garden City being two of them, two of the best teams, and also probably the best team in that period, at generation was Salonica, which you know won almost 100 games in a row uh, during the 50s. And, uh, but this just rivalry goes way back. Here's Connor trying to back down his defender. Kicks it back out. The one more pass. And up top is Haggerty. Gets downhill. Haggerty fires it high. Good defense there by Lesur to affect that shot. They had a short stick lock right there on uh, on Peterson, and now they're back in. So they're you know, in and out of things, changing it up. And here like comes Connor again, the Colgate commit. Definitely in zone right now. Go ahead and see, you know, passing those matchups. And you said it when we were out at Comsawag in that game earlier this week against EI, so many teams on the high school level as that pass goes off the mark. So many teams now on the high school level here on the island uh, going to that zone look. Sure, the federation rules. There's no shot clock, and in, 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 uh, you know, I mean, you, you you could jump in and out of it. You could you could affect play a little bit. You know, some people would think you, because of the shot clock you'd be in a zone to kind of you know use that, but there's a lot of reasons to be in zone and uh, and pretty effective Garden City right now. Changing the pace of play a little bit. Both teams have one timeout remaining in this first half. And sometimes zone and nerves, kids. You know, you 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 want to get the game going a little faster. You want to get a shot quick. You're not patient to you know handle the ball, make 15, 20 passes to wear the defense down. And not many teams have that guy who could sting it from outside, right? It's it's, it's there in the collegiate game, obviously. Uh, but not as much in the high school game. So it, it kind of gives the goalie, too, that open look from 15 yards. Yeah, a, a Division one college coach told me a couple of years ago, you know, how do you play against zone? He just said recruit better shooters. <laughs> Interesting dynamic. Not far from the truth, but when you watch the guys at the high-level guys play, their ability to shoot them, nice move. This guy's a pretty good shooter. As Fennell split dodge and then fired it over the cage. You know, Stevie's got, got great size to him, but he gets in between guys like a guy of a much smaller body type. It's pretty amazing how he can get between guys. And M makes that save. Looked like that was against Ottomanelli. And now they'll ride and get the turnover. Yeah, just some, just some uh, passing a little off there, coming off the save, and uh, Garden City gets it back. We approach the two-minute mark left in this first half. It is 5-2, the lead for Garden City. The Trojans scored the first five goals, five different goal scorers, and Manhasset has clawed their way back. Right now with two minutes to go, if you ask Coach Fidel for a script of the game, a pretty good script, you know. I mean, it's, I don't think, you know, you're not going to shut Manhasset out, but a pretty good script right now at 5-2. Look at this work defensively by the Indians. And they'll get the timeout as Cromwell wanted to make sure that his guys kept that possession. Great ground ball by Connor right there, coming up with it and, and uh, able to get the timeout, but has it. So right now, if you're Manhasset with 140 to go, maybe you could go two for one right here, Dylan, right? Because you'll play a little bit, score a goal, win the faceoff, maybe get another one before halftime. This series has had so many incredible moments, Mike. This is, uh, we've got three of these cool graphics to show you. This is the, hit, the highlights of the Woodstick. Again, this is 139 here today. 
Uh, and it goes back to that first meeting back in 1935, a 9-0 win for Manhasset. Well, it truly was the Woodstick, right? Yeah. Uh, Woodstick for a long time, up until the mid-70s. Early 70s, Plastic became the, the dominant, you know, head. But you can see in 73, right? 12-11. Yeah, John stuff. Valvo, uh, 18 saves, 6 in the final minute. And then you go on 1977, a one-goal win for Manhasset as well. Uh, yeah. That was a big one. All kinds of great names there. Bob Henriksen, Scotty Borger, Skip Vosberg, Mark Hollis, just tremendous players at the next level as well in high school. We'll show you the second one here as well. And uh, we mentioned Kraus, right, before. Well, that's Dad, Andy Kraus, 17 of 21 from the face-off X for Garden City in that Nassau semifinal. There were years that they're in the same classification. That, in 1984, was one of them, and Hassett with that one-goal win. The same Kraus. classification deal was called no classification. Yeah, good point. I, I win the whole thing. Good point. I love, and I love this one, too, the phantom goal. I, I was there. Yep, there was a goal called. So the, uh, so Roger Buttle scored a goal, took a shot. They called it a goal. No one really knows if it went in or not. Some people say it went in. The other people say it didn't. But they broke Garden City's 96-game uh, home win streak. It's pretty uh, pretty amazing stuff right there. And then you see a year later, right? We c you could de deem that the revenge game <laughs> off of the phantom goal. Now let me let me guess. Is that is that who... Goal or no goal, as that's definitely not a goal. Fargione makes the save. Is that based on the community that you live in? Definitely. <laughs> and now you were saying Manhasset off the timeout was thinking maybe two for one, but Fargione, Fargione said makes no. The save, yep. Nope. nope. And now you can go probably for one. Might have numbers here off the, off the exchange here. Here's Archer. The substitution, we got Manhasset gets in. Backs it up, and yeah, I would think here and Fennell runs out to make sure that he can get his last time out. And you know what, we're, we were showing you the history. Why don't we show you the that last one here too, the most recent additions. And again, Lesur, right? That's Uncle Peter. Back in March 31st in 2001. Hey, that's a day in the Woodstick. When you get 10 points in the Woodstick, uh, that is a day. That was the most lopsided Woodstick Classic game ever as Garden City won that one 20-8. And then in 10 years later, how about Drew Belinsky as well? The winner with 10 seconds left. A 7-6 win and a game that we had for you here on the Varsity Media Sports Network as well. In 20, 2021, Manhasset, 19-14 over Garden City. That game was played right here. And Joey Terenzi, a big day as well. The highest scoring game in Woodstick history. What was cool about that game, Mike, you and I were both here for that, was uh, that was off of COVID, right? And, you know, you had crowd restrictions before that, but that was the first time things were open. It was a beautiful day here in Garden City, a huge crowd as well. That was, that was really awesome to be able to see the lacrosse community able to come back out and, uh, you know, it, it felt like we were back. Absolutely, and Joey Terenzi with that wild behind-the-back goal, right? Great call on the behind-the-back goal. We're back to live action here inside now, the final minute of this first half. It was a first quarter dominated by Garden City. Manhasset's worked their way back, but GC can get a, a big juice one here maybe if they can get this clock down and, and perhaps score inside uh, on this final possession. Here's think, Henry Gibbons. I think Coach Fennell told him it's either going to be. Oh, and look at this. I think Coach Fennell told him in the huddle it's either going to be 6-2 or 5-2. We ain't going to let him get to, get to 5-3 and got a flag down. Kip Zachariah got the stick up on Gibbons. So this will be a man up for Garden City as well. GC today, Mike, they're 2-2 two for two on the man up. Interesting to see if they'll play here and try to and try to get a, get a goal here, you know, try to score in the last 32.2 seconds, or they'll hold it. If you hold it, there'll be no faceoffs. You could take you could take a, you know, count your out of the equation for the next half. You but see, if you if you don't score, you may have a faceoff. The ball might be loose. We we'll see the, the decision here by Coach Fennell. So it's a one minute slash. Oh, and how about that? Gibbons 
Got a 30-second misconduct. He might have said something or had an action. I think Coach Fidel not too happy with that. So it'll, it'll ultimately be a 30-second man up because we'll be even five aside. Now, does this change the strategy a little bit for Garden City? Yeah, I, I, I still think, you know, maybe if you're going to go be five on, it's going to be five on five right now, it looks like, for 30 seconds. Which will bring you down to two seconds, so I would hold, hold it. Hold the, hold the ball, yeah. yep. The deal going back to before we mentioned Andy. We mentioned Andy Kraus, the father of the, of the Kraus boys, playing now and a uh, schoolboy legend here in Garden City. Andy, one of the great, great, great players in uh, in Nassau County history. Tremendous, tremendous face-off guy in high school in the University of Virginia. Um, one of the very best players ever, I think, at Garden City. You put him on the on the short list, so maybe to Mount Rushmore, and people have some other opinions. But now that is a great he's conversation to be had. Right there. Yeah, I, I have the to Garden play. City and Manhasset Mount Rushmores. A lot of names. You could throw a lot of names in there. Well, I mean, just even thinking legacy numbers, right? You've got to get Johnny Driscoll in there from Manhasset. As here comes Fennell off the timeout. Lapina on him again. They're going to hold it here. See if Lapina can just shadow him and maybe get the ball on the ground somehow. Yeah, by our math, it should be GC with a 28-second man up. But more importantly, the, you, there's no face-off then. So sure. you negate what's been a, a perfect first half for Cal Girard. I can't get that, 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 that Mount Rushmore thing out of my mind. It's got a lot of names to run through there. You know, well, I got, something to, I, I got something else to put in your mind <laughs> and in your, uh, in your mouth here coming up here at halftime. Good half for Garden City, certainly, right? It started early, 5 nothing lead for the Trojans. Manhasset worked their way back. But that is the lead right now for GC. It is five to two. We'll take a quick break, get things set up for our Pizzeria G halftime food review. It is the 139th edition of the Woodstick Classic presented by Arena Graphics right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming schedules and content and on social media at Varsity Media. Since 1989, Arena Graphics has been a leader in producing the finest quality custom screen printed and embroidered uniforms and apparel. Specializing in serving schools, clubs, small businesses, or large corporations, Arena Graphics can help you promote your image on wearable apparel and other promotional products. Ask us about setting up a team or business web store for easy ordering and user-friendly fundraising options. Search us on the web at arenagraphicsny.com. Arena Graphics, your gear starts here. Are you and your family looking for a great day of fishing without having to travel too far? Well, Bad Fish Charters is the place for you. Conveniently located in Huntington Harbor in Huntington, New York, Bad Fish Charters is fully outfitted with all of the gear you need to have a great day on the water with your friends and family. Each boat is spacious with an enclosed cabin, equipped with all Coast Guard mandated safety equipment, fully licensed and insured. Bad Fish Charters offers full and half day fishing charters accommodating groups of up to six passengers. To book your next fishing trip, give Kevin a call today at 631-681-4290. Lacrosse players, listen up. It's halftime, and you know what that means. It's time to tune up your stick. At String It Up in Huntington, we know a well-strung stick that can make all the difference on the field. That's why we offer fast and reliable stringing services that will have you back in the game in no time. Visit String It Up today at 41 Stewart Avenue in Huntington Village or on the web, www.stringitup.com. Varsity Media offers live streaming, videography, and photography services for all teams and individuals of all ages. In business since 2010, we are the trusted source when it comes to sports media coverage. If you have a big game that needs to be filmed or live streamed, or an athlete in need of action photography, reach out today and save 15% when you mention this ad. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? 
For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Varsity Media offers live sportscasts for any event. Our productions include announcers, multiple camera angles, graphics, instant replay, and so much more. Hankinson getting it back. Hankinson going in, dropping it back. The shot of the goal! That's it! That's it! Norton! Norton! Pittsburgh! The Class 8 champions! If you want to enhance your events or make the experience better for your viewers, reach out to Varsity Media today and learn more about our live sportscast. Contact Varsity Media at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. We welcome you back to Garden City High School, the 139th edition of the Woodstick Classic. It is time for the Pizzeria G Halftime Food Review. Dylan Butler, Mike Hungerford, a hungry as well here inside the press box. Uh, and this is always something that we look forward to here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. It is our halftime food review. We've got a good one here for you today. Pizzeria G. These guys are located right in the heart of Garden City. Uh, uh, Julian Giannuzzi, their owner, uh, a St. Anthony's alum. Uh, they've got, listen, on a rainy day like this, right, you're hungry. You maybe got to do some errands, right? There's nothing better than walking into a clean pizzeria, 50 different pizzas there as well. You've got your gluten-free options. You've got like you've got your cauliflower uh, personal pan as well. But uh, a clean pizzeria, a beautiful place to go. You get the aroma going, right? Nothing like it on a rainy day. Uh, can we go? In fact, they brought to us now avoids having to go there afterwards. <laughs> there we go. We got it right That's here. Right. Or maybe go there after as well. We could do that too. Pizzeria G, uh, here's what we got going here. Uh, take a look at this. This is their MVP. All right, now why is this MVP? Not just because we got Mike Hungerford here with us. It's the MVP, which stands, it's, you, have, you, have, you saw there, you got three different uh, sauces, right? You've got your marinara. That's the M, right? V for vodka and the P for pesto, right? This is the same slice we're told that Dave Portnoy reviewed. If it's good enough for Portnoy, it's good enough for us. So we're going to uh, get ready here. I'm going to make sure I put my mic up this time. I'm not going to get sauce on this one. So, uh, <laughs> Heard about that. <laughs> uh, you want to do the honors, Mike? Yeah, I'm going to go for the edge right over here. Yeah, you always got the corner. I'll get the corner. I'll take the other corner from you as well. I like, I like the corners. There we go. Yep, 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 yep. All right. Mic's wow. up. Wow. Here we go. Here we go. Oh. Wow. Listen, not going to lie. I was a little bit nervous with the different sauces coming in, right? How does it marry together? It's really good. Um, this is a marriage made in heaven. Incredible stuff. Um, the pesto, like there's nothing mm. that, like nothing is overpowering the other. No. Nope. The crust is just crispy enough. I like it a little crispy, but you don't like it yep. like, too burned. But that's really good. That's, that's, that's pretty good. I now here's say, a question. Here's a question. Does it pass the test? This more than passes the test. <laughs> Pizzeria G, you're in. Pizzeria G is in. We'll, we'll pop on that that uh, full screen again. Uh, let you know their location and how you can call Pizzeria G. Here it is, 191 7th Street, right in the heart of Garden City. There from between 7th and Franklin, 516-231-2311. Pizzeria G dot com. Pizzeria G. Amazing stuff. We'll take a break here uh, from, from Garden City. We'll get a, see if we could get this slice in us right here. Uh, and we'll be back more uh, for the 139th edition of the Wood Stick Classic right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for upcoming schedules and content and on social media at Varsity Media. Since 1989, Arena Graphics has been a leader in producing the finest quality custom screen printed and embroidered uniforms and apparel. Specializing in serving schools, clubs, small businesses, or large corporations, Arena Graphics can help you promote your image on wearable apparel and other promotional products. Ask us about setting up a team or business web store for easy ordering and user-friendly fundraising options. Search us on the web at arenagraphicsny.com. Arena Graphics, your gear starts here. 
Are you and your family looking for a great day of fishing without having to travel too far? Well, Bad Fish Charters is the place for you. Conveniently located in Huntington Harbor in Huntington, New York, Bad Fish Charters is fully outfitted with all of the gear you need to have a great day on the water with your friends and family. Each boat is spacious with an enclosed cabin, equipped with all Coast Guard mandated safety equipment, fully licensed and insured. Bad Fish Charters offers full and half day fishing charters accommodating groups of up to six passengers. To book your next fishing trip, give Kevin a call today at 631 681 4290. Lacrosse players, listen up. It's halftime, and you know what that means. It's time to tune up your stick. At String It Up in Huntington, we know a well strung stick that can make all the difference on the field. That's why we offer fast and reliable stringing services that will have you back in the game in no time. Visit String It Up today at 41 Stewart Avenue in Huntington Village or on the web, www.stringitup.com. Varsity Media offers live streaming, videography, and photography services for all teams and individuals of all ages. In business since 2010, we are the trusted source when it comes to sports media coverage. If you have a big game that needs to be filmed or live streamed, or an athlete in need of action photography, reach out today and save 15% when you mention this ad. Contact us at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Are you a local business looking to advertise? Well, Varsity Media is the perfect place for you. We offer affordable rates both inside our live stream broadcast and through our social media channels. With coverage all over Long Island targeting the 16 to 54 demographic, why not take advantage and advertise today? For pricing and inventory availability, contact us today at 516-403-2050 or email ben at varsitymedia.net. Varsity Media offers live sportscasts for any event. Our productions include announcers, multiple camera angles, graphics, instant replay, and so much more. Hankinson getting it back. Hankinson going in, dropping it back. The shot of the goal! That's it! That's it! Norton! Norton! Pittsburgh, the Class 8 champions! If you want to enhance your events or make the experience better for your viewers, reach out to Varsity Media today. We welcome you back to Warren King Fields here on the campus of Garden City where the second half is underway. And this is going to be what's left now of that man up for Garden City. Another 20 seconds on their man up. See what Garden City comes out with here just in that extended 3-3 look a little bit. Again, big thanks to the folks at Pizzeria G, Julian and the crew and Absolutely incredible stuff. Here's Archer. And again, every shot affected, right? That was Lapina in on his hands. Archer tried to step in between two defenders right there and get one shot off before the, the time expired. A good penalty kill by the Indians right there. A right, big one because Garden City scored in their first two. Now this was minimized a little bit, right, by playing even for the first 30 seconds of that one minute penalty. Here's Fennell. Spins on Lapina. Jump shot and Fennell gets the goal his second. And he extends Garden City's lead to 6-2. By elevating himself, he increases his angle, right? He makes the goal bigger. You know, instead of just staying on, on field level and trying to shoot to the 6x6 six six there, by elevating himself, he makes the goal even bigger in the top corners of it. Goes back to his right hand. Elevates. Squeeze in that far corner. So Fennell, his second of the game, 22nd of the season. First half, it was Gerard winning all eight of the faceoffs. Make it nine for nine. He loses it for a second. And he gets it to Peterson. Wearing that, that special number 32. You see how skilled Cal Gerard is, though. He's not just, you know, some guys can face off and they don't handle the ball particularly well. He's a player. The Garden City guys have done a good job of minimizing. You know, he stood him at sideline for a long time between goals, right? He gets a little cold and rain, rained a little bit here late in the second quarter and at halftime. Seems to have stopped again. Here's Peterson up top. He mentioned that number 32, of course, Johnny Driscoll's 
number 32. Such an honor here at Manhasset to wear that number. In Nassau County, the Midfielder of the Year Award is named after Tron Driscoll. Here's Cardulo. Back up top to Peterson. We've seen multiple looks defensively from Garden City. Looks like it might be zone again. It's hard to tell by the formation sometimes, but I bet that they're following that matchup and now they're passing it on. It looks like man now. Good work defensively there as well by Owen Wukta. Another family thing. I remember his brother Tyler, who played at Fairfield, was so great in that same position. The look to the cage and the dunk in front by Liam Connor. And Manhasset pulls one back. You know, it's, it's Connor's one of those players that can dodge and shoot and do things that he can also uh, play off the ball and play inside. Pretty versatile. Off the dodge, they throw it forward, they draw two. And he beats the recovery. He just comes downhill in that, in that spot, finds a soft spot, and beats the recovery. It was Cargillo who found him, and then Connor looking like he does on the hardwood as well. Dunks it in front. And after the goal, Cole Weber called for a minute slash. The first man up opportunity for Manhasset. So, as they say, as Connor knows in the sport of basketball, the and one for Manhasset. So this is a man down face-off. Not that I think it'll change things here for Gerard. Wins that one clean. He tried to get a break out of that one, but even though they were man up and trying to push it, but good decision by Connor to hold the ball and, and get the uh, man up team on. And here's Connor, dad Chris. A captain at Maryland as well in 1990. And again, for me, that's one of the coolest aspects of this game. It's a, it's a community game, it's a neighborhood game, but it's a family game as well, especially between these two tradition-laced programs. Off the flip, 21 seconds left on the man up. Here comes Connor. Trying to find that opening, beat the rotation there. Well, it's on the carpet, Haggerty's gotta pick it up. He does, good, good ground ball by Haggerty. Just to keep that one alive. We're even now. Seven was Patrick Arnold in front. And a save by Fargione to deny Connor. I think Connor just caught that ball inside and couldn't get out of his stick quick. And he tried to turn around a little bit and everything and Fargione just got a piece of it. And here comes GC, Fennell, BTB. And I think M got a piece. We go the other way now, up and down. Haggerty, stick checked away. Good work defensively there by Tristan Malahi, the Navy commit. Good job defenseman Malahi. Sometimes those attack might come up to get those balls off the clear. And the defender is so conservative and play off of him, right? And Malay, he was like right on top of him. And as soon as he caught it and turned, bang, there was a check and the ball goes out of bounds. Andrew Adamanelli, his cousin Jay, was such a big part of this Garden City attack a year ago. We just almost had that up and down going a little bit there, Dylan, right? Selfishly, here I am. You know, I like to see <laughs> that get going a little bit, right? 6-3, the score. Garden City has led right away. They scored the first five goals in this one. And then Manhasset tried to chip away in that second quarter. Manhasset got those two goals, and then they didn't, you know, haven't gotten, then Garden City got the sixth one, they got one more. And that, trying to keep Manhasset from getting a couple goals in a row and getting a run going will be big for Garden City. See a bit of a switch now, right? Lapina not on Fennell. Instead, it looked like he went to Ottomanelli. Here's Archer who draws the pole. Archer, a little shimmy, a little shake. Archer, step down. Shot was wide of the mark. I love how Archer started going a little bit, used hesitation moves, didn't have his man beat, but he re-squared himself back up to the goal and then re-dodged nicely. He didn't feel a slide coming and was able to get a shot off from a lower angle, but he, he's pretty good from that low angle. And that was a great dodge by him, just setting himself up. 
Here comes Fennell using the strength. Fennell hands off to Gibbons. Excuse me. That was Ottomanelli too, not seven. Garden City is used to playing tight games. They've had, I think six of their ten have been one goal games. And they had a deficit against Syosset to win by three. That shot off the outside of the net and M unable to grab the ball, but one of his boys does. Good job by him though, seeing it wide and just getting a piece of the ball so the Garden City player didn't get it. And then they got a clear, which is becoming an issue a little bit. Here comes PJ Flood. And Flood gets it across to Haggerty. Now you got, you're got you playing the substitution game. You know, we're, we're midway through, a little more than midway through the second quarter now, and a third quarter, excuse me, and uh, you know the Manhasset defense is, is, is owned up. I mean, they've, they've got some stops, and, and offensively they're going to have to, you know, get going a little bit and, and, and get the score back to even one play at a time. Here's Cargiulo. Cargiulo wraps around, and that shot was wide. And the backup was there as Fargione came off out of his net to try to force that. I love what he did there too, Cargiulo, using the net as a defender. Sure, when you get that defender hung up over, trying to jump over the back of the V and the net, trying to get his feet tangled up a little bit. Always a, uh, a crafty offensive move. Cargiulo, that big, athletic, bruising midi, kind of that UMass prototype. They, they slid pretty early, showed pretty early there to Peterson. I'd like to see him push that matchup a little more on a redodge, maybe off of when they retreat back from the, from the show, from that hedge. Connor to X. Oh, just out of the stick of Cargiulo, and now it's got to be a ground ball war. However, it bounced fortuitously to Cargiulo, and they'll reset. I think Manhattan has just been a little bit off the whole game. Maybe that's some of that's the pressure in the defense of Garden City, but they've just been a little bit off with that passing and not been as crisp as I've seen them in previous games. Connor! Oh, Cargiulo wraps it around. Goal number two for Cargiulo in this game, and we've got a two-goal game. Good goal by Cargiulo right there, coming around the corner and just... Using his stick, very he extends his stick a little bit to increase his, his angle, right? Rather than trying to just purely wrap his body around, he runs north of the goal, using that stick to increase his angle. It's a really, really nice play. So it's now 6-4. You, you wonder in the game when the Cal Gerard factor is going to, is it going to be part of the game? Is it going to start to take over the game? And right now it looks like this could be, this is the time. Here comes Gerard, hands off. And Connor smart, not forcing things. It's now 11 for 11 for Gerard at the faceoff effects. One of two returning All-Americans on Long Island. The other, Tyler McCarthy out of Kinequat. And both will play their collegiate lacrosse in the ACC. McCarthy for Syracuse and Gerard for Duke. They, those two teams played each other today. Here's Peterson. Try to beat him on the midline sub on the change. Skips it. Getting top side, low sidearm shot by Cargiulo, wide of the mark. Cargiulo's warming up nicely right now. You can see he's getting confidence by, you know, not that he doesn't play without confidence, just feeling it a little bit and, and, and being a bigger part of the game plan right now. He'd be in short stick, so try to take advantage of that matchup. Wucht is on him right now, only a sophomore, but Wucht has got some considerable game experience. Played a tremendous amount as a freshman last year. How great was he last year in the LIC? And Wasn't he the one who dunked that 10-man ride goal? The 10-man goal, yeah. Right? The 10-man guy. Yeah. As a freshman in the LIC. Here's Cargiulo switching hands. Little stutter step. Slide comes his way. They're really supporting those short stick matchups early if they can and just trying to recover, and that's what I talk about with the short six, right? Like, you're gonna have trouble sometimes, but just know how to fit yourself back in the defense. Here it goes again. On the yellow. Little two man here, or big little. Here comes Connor. Tries to get high, that one off the mark. Good defense, again, by Malahi. Malahi's stick broken, looks like he's gotta go off the field. Why aren't we pulling? 
Well, that's what the Manhasset crowd is wondering. Why are we letting Garden City get the man back? Oh, I think there was something on Manhasset, mouthpiece on the ground. So yeah, like both yeah. Teams. That was Mondiello's mouthpiece. And here's that two-man game again at X. Here comes Connor. Thought about the inside roll. Now they'll change direction. They may come around to that matchup again. Peterson can come downhill now. Little skip in his game. The slide comes. Peterson backs out. Back to Connor. An extended possession for the Indi for the Indians, and it pays off as Connor with the jump shot. Hey, he's big enough as it is. He got the six eight there on that goal. Connor slowly but surely seems like taking the game over on the offensive end a little bit, getting a favorable matchup against the short stick there. And how about Peterson just not trying to do too much? Sometimes the best play is the easiest play. Throw the ball to the next man, and now you have walked the matched up against Connor. Connor gets to the high side and beats a little bit of a late slide there. It's one of the few times that I think the Garden City guys have come late, a little bit late to the short stick and he was able to dunk it. Connor second, 23rd of the year. And it is a one goal game. Face off win number 12 for Gerard. Here comes Lapina. And a flag. So Garden City offside here. The old, old Mo. Old Mo is spinning a little bit right now. The Manhattan guy's playing with a little bit more juice. And if you're Garden City, you're going to have to weather the flag down here. You have seven defenders now. And weather the flag down and weather a man, a man down situation as well. Here we go from X. Danny Colon backs it up. The sophomore. Colon. Slide comes. And as you said, an extra defender right now for Garden City. Pops it back up top. Here comes the hot man, Connor. Gets downhill. And Connor gets it to X. Inside roll. Keeps it. Smart decision. Good job defense with that. You know, they, the, the extra player is a slide man right now. He's a free go. Now Haggerty, a little skip. And we'll play catch at X as we're inside the final minute of the third quarter. Going inside. Low shot by Connor. Off the mark. But Manhasset will be man up for the next 30 seconds. Connor for a big man showing some quickness, right? Getting underneath and getting that shot wide, but when you have that flag down, you know, some people are like, well, how, how are you going to play offense against seven defenders? But maybe you draw a second foul. You know, you got to play through it. Maybe you get a goal. You don't know. You can't just count on your man up be, being, good, being good enough to get it done. So this is a 30-second man up for Manhasset. Their second man up of the game. They're 0 for 1. See if Garden City plays it straight up, 6 on 5, or they try to maybe ghost lock a player or press out a little bit, do something to change the... Uh, Shorten the 30 seconds down to like maybe 18 or 17. Here's Arnold to the crease, and there's the goal. And we are tied. Liam Connor, the hat trick. Well run, man, up play there by, by Manhasset. Running a very typical fork, very typical set that ends up being like sometimes people run it as a step down to that backside shooter off a seal, and instead they find the cutter. Here it is again. Well, that's the celebration there for Connor, his third of the game. He's got three and one, and we are tied at six. Final 26 seconds of this third quarter. This is the first one that's kind of been mucked up a little bit. Still a win for Manhasset, and now you could play that game you mentioned before, right? Get one here, maybe late. Here comes Peterson with 11. And you can see Manhasset going quick. Split dodge, ball on the carpet. 
Spins back out to midfield. And Connor will get the ground ball, but he won't get the final shot off. So Garden City jumped out 5-0, and Manhasset has outscored them 6-1 since. You do the math. That means we're 6-6 going into the fourth quarter here. It's the 139th edition of the Woodstick Classic presented by Arena Graphics right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. <clears throat> Since 1989, Arena Graphics has been a leader in producing the finest quality custom screen printed and embroidered uniforms and apparel. Specializing in serving schools, clubs, small businesses, or large corporations, Arena Graphics can help you promote your image on wearable apparel and other promotional products. Ask us about setting up a team or business web store for easy ordering and user-friendly fundraising options. Search us here on the campus of Garden City High School. Dylan Butler, Mike Hungerford, our entire Varsity Media crew here. It is 6-6 going into the fourth and final quarter of regulation. And Mike, let's take a look back at our keys to the game for both of these teams, kind of see how these guys are doing, right? For Manhasset, it was about not letting Fennell get comfortable. They wanted to shoot at a great percentage. No bad angle shots and possessions, he says, in this game matters. You want to win the 50-50 ground balls, continue our face-off success. For Garden City, you want to minimize that face-off deficit. Defensive efficiency, limit those second chances. And you want to get clean clears and try, if you can, to capitalize on transition opportunities. I think in that third quarter, what you saw was Manhasset, um, you know, certainly they got their keys right in the third quarter to get back in the game and get to 6-6. Another face-off win for Cal Girard. If you're keeping track at home, he's 14 for 14 in this game. The one previous to that, the one at the end of the third quarter, was a close one to losing one. First he tried one, to pull yeah. it out, and it kind of got stuck a little bit. But his uh, his pole very adeptly got to the ball there. I think that was um, um, the, the LSM got to the ball, was able to clean that up and, and get and keep it 100%. So here we go. Here we go. Manhasset looking for their first lead of this game. Again, it was 5 nothing, seemingly right out of the chute. And they've had to claw their way back ever since. Garden City's played a lot of defense late in the third quarter, late in the second quarter, and most of the third quarter. And I see if they get worn down a little bit here. Here's Cargiulo. He's got two and one in this game. Little swim. Cargiulo! See what Manhas is doing right there, Dylan, is they're putting Peterson right next to Cargiulo. So they're trying to see if Garden City will come off that will help off of Peterson onto Cardulo, and the help comes late and allows him to turn and shoot that ball. So they're putting their two players together. You see here, there's, there's Cardulo, and you see, the, you see the hedge, and there it comes a little bit late because Peterson is the adjacent player. Some, some good coaching there by Manhasset, some, and some good execution there to get that goal. And you had Haggerty as well at X, and now you saw that Malahi had a slide, not slide, right, but he had to slough off to him as well, which created a little extra space. Another face-off win for Gerard. Now if you're Garden City, you gotta, you gotta bite down your mouthpiece, you gotta get a stop, you gotta dig in, and uh, yeah, the Manhattan offense is feeling a little comfortable right now. And now the game pressure we talk about, right, the game pressure has shifted over to Garden City, and we need to get a stop and get the ball cleared, and, uh, and, and, and try to even up the game here. Big possession here for Manhasset. The momentum game shifting to the visitors. And ironically, that's where the win has been these last couple of years, right? It was Manhasset here two years ago in the highest scoring Woodstick getting the win. And then last year it was Stevie Fennell potting the overtime winner to give Garden City the road win. Here's Cargiulo. Peterson, good move to his left, pops. Pops it back out. Now downhill being his man. Good save by Fargione. Good save because he got right to the middle of the cage. Had a lot to look at. And, for, and uh, Fargione denied him and had to got the rebound clean. That one could be huge. But M on the other side makes the save as well. 
was fortunate for Gordon Seed that that ball was kind of shot directly into him. But him was in a good spot, you know, positionally. And he was able to clean that ball up off the bounce and, and no rebound. And again, after the game, we'll have the breakout goaltending group save of the game. Might that one by Fargion. Could that be the one? Let's see. It is a contender, certainly, at this point. It certainly is, no doubt. Two goalies, two goalies have played well in a 7-6 game. Very rarely have teams of this caliber with 7-6 do the goalies not play well. M with, unofficially, with eight saves, and Fargion the other side with six. Fargion the junior bound for Villanova, and M having a terrific season for the Indians after splitting time a year ago. M last year was just, you know, he was, he was a... a he was the goalie. He was the man who played in the goal a year ago, and now he's an integral part. He seems like his improvement has been tremendous. The games I've seen, very impressed with how he's played and uh, in the games I was able to see of them so far. And, and, and you can see he's worked at it really hard. Tremendous improvement. Here's Cargiulo. Cargiulo and Connor right now, both with three and one. And as a result, Peterson only with one, but that's been fine. You've got multiple guys. Little stutter step, good recognition defensively by Garden City to pick him up. Good right to right split by Mondiello right there. Just able to shake his defender, but you see how quick Garden City is able to, to slide. And that was with Lasseur. Now the stall warning is on for Manhasset. I'm not sure the last time we've said that. That's a good call by the officials because they, while they're playing offense, you know, and they're going to the goal and they're trying to get the best shot they can. You know, this could go on for a long time. So Manhattan's got to keep it in. And there's Cargiulo, the Indians, with a one-goal lead. As skilled as Manhattan is, they could, they could do this for a long time and be able to, you know, grind the game out here a little bit. Was six one of those games still on that one? You know, when, when you're when you're working, when you have a job, you know, 10, 15 years from now, and you meet someone from Garden City and they ask you, "Did you win the Woodstick you seen the year?" No one wants to know what the score was. They just want to know if you won, right? And they also don't want to. They, they don't care about other games, right? And look at that! Off the stall warning. Doesn't matter. Danny Boy, Danny Colin with the goal, and he extends Manhattan's lead to eight six. It's a situation where the Garden City defense just gets worn down. You know, they play a lot of defense, long possession, finally work a matchup. Just keep probing the matchups, find one you like. Here's Colin against the short stick. Little hesitation move. Great little hesitation move. I think everybody in the place thought he was going to bounce and move it to the next man, but instead he reattacked and turned the corner. How about that? The sophomore's 14th goal of the year. And it's an 8-6 lead for Manhasset. And Gerard makes it a perfect 16 for 16. And now it's rinse and repeat if you are Manhasset. You know, we were saying earlier, Dylan, when would the Cal Gerard effect really take place, right? And when Garden City was winning the game and, and having good possessions and it hasn't really taken place. It didn't really take place, but here it really has. It reminds me a little bit of the LIC last year against against Mount Sinai, where you know later in the game, Cal won a bunch later in the game and just grinded the game down. And and Mount a great Mount Sinai team with Joey Spleta never had the ball, right? Could those two be on a collision course this year with a different Spelina at the faceoff X this year? Jake Spelina having great success for the Mustangs out there in Suffolk County. Jake Spillane has had an unbelievable year. I actually, I apologize in the broadcast right I haven't mentioned, I mentioned some guys that didn't mention him, and he's played so great this year. Very impressive. Cargiulo tries to get it to Colin. I think he stepped in. Doesn't matter, though. Garden City comes away. And to your point about Jake Spillane, well, he is the USA Lacrosse Magazine's Northeast Player of the Week right now for helping the Mustangs get out to that, or that three-win week Last week, big win against Bayport Blue Point. He won 41 of 44 faceoffs in those three games. Also had, I think it was eight and four. Also stayed on playing defense uh, in a while. 
had a really short possession last time. They had, a, like, a, like, I guess a, a slow break turned into a slow break situation where they got a shot, and M turned it away and corralled the rebound, and they didn't have the ball again since. Here's Archer trying to get by Flood. Flood's like, no way. He is a gnat. Look at Flood, the takeaway. P.J. Flood. That is a juice moment, and it's time out for Manhasset. Let the boys celebrate that one, Mike. That's one of those plays. Where do you get energy from? Where do you find energy? You know, goals create energy, but so does really good defense and, and, and battling and being tough. That's another way to create energy, and you can see that the Manhattan players appreciate his efforts right there by Flood. P.J. Flood, that 1B. <laughs> Along with Lapina. So now you, you, you're... Sorry, Dylan. Yeah, no, I was going to say, let's, let's take a look back at these last two matchups here. We go back to 2021. We mentioned it before. This is the highest scoring one. Garden City gets off to a fast start. They led 2-1 to one early, but how about this? Terenzi, audacious BTB at the end of the first quarter. And that really set the tone for the Indians. You got a lot of guys involved. Aiden Mulholland had five. Nolan Garcia had four. Ryan Connolly led the Trojans with four. But Manhasset, they get their third straight wood stick win in the highest scoring wood stick game ever. They win this one 19-14. Fast forward a year ago, Matty P, Matt Perfetto stings it from deep. We are tied at nine. Then Jay Adamanelli, he scores his sixth on this rebound attempt. Now GC's back ahead. Dawson Riley, that's his fifth goal. He ties it. So that means we go to overtime. And here comes Stevie Fennell saying, go home, everybody. Walk-off time for Garden City. Their first Woodstick win since 2018. Great stuff right there. Back and forth, right? I think there were some times in the Woodstick, Dylan, as you see Garden City starting to pressure a little bit here, try to chase a little bit. There were some times in the in the uh, late 70s to the early 80s where I think Manhasset won about 10 games in a row, and then Garden City turned it and won about 10 in the, in the 80s into the early 90s. But other than that, the games are incredibly back and forth. Two wins by one, one and one, one and one. And usually Amazing. of the close game variety like we have here today. Sure, those, those two of all 139 games to have each team only have a 10-game streak is, is pretty amazing. Here's Haggerty. He's chased down here by the short stick. Wukta pops it back up top. A dangerous pass, but not when you got the big man, Liam Connor, there. Manhasset's, you know, for my money, the most skilled team in Nassau, maybe one of the most skilled teams on Long Island. And, uh, you know, when you want to keep them, they have to stay in the box. It's not, it's not too hard. They can, even with this pressure, their skill level, the ability to throw good passes to each other, either on a bad weather day like today, pretty impressive. Here's Peterson. Gets a few whacks from Matty Kephart. Kephart, the Princeton commit. Now, if you've been has it, you want to try to keep the extra defender away. You don't want to pick here if you can help it, keep the other defender away. Right now, you have Peterson with a short stick. There comes the double. Great defense there by Garden City. Kephart Wukta. ended up Wukta. taking it away. Or got the GB, at least, after Wukta got the takeaway. Big play by Garden City, and they might have a break right here. Here come Garden City. The pass by Weber. High shot and a goal by Henry Gibbons. And we are back to one goal. Huge play. Just lost Cole Weber a little bit in the clearing game and he came down and turned it into a fast break. So Gibbons with one and one in this game. It's a one goal game as we approach the final three minutes. How about the takeaway by Walked in the ground ball, right? And the decision, the smarts to the lacrosse IQ by Weber, right? That was the more high percentage play. He doesn't go for the glory, he goes for the assist to get it to Henry. You know what we haven't seen today too from Gerard? A lot of times the ones that he doesn't win, they're procedures, right? And he's been dead on perfect today. Sure, no violations.
and Cromwell will take his final timeout, which gives us an opportunity to show you our upcoming sportscast schedule. Hey, I know that team. The Dalers off a big win here this afternoon. Was at Mamaronek, right? Taking on Syosset. Suddenly he's quiet now. He doesn't want to talk about the Dalers. <laughs> Cold Spring Harbor, Southside as well. We go out back out to Long Island as C.J. Schwartz. Actually, back out to Suffolk County. C.J. Schwartz against Bayport Blue Point. That should be an interesting one. And uh, two teams that uh, don't exchange Christmas cards too often. The Dalers and the Chiefs, that should be fun. And then, of course, Riggs Rock, one of those, uh, just like uh, this game, another game that you circle on your calendar, remembering the life, of course, of the late, great James Regan, who died in uh, defense of his country, a Manhasset resident, played at Chaminade, that should be fun. And then uh, East Islip and Shoreham Wading River as well. That's both on May 13th. We'll show you Manhasset's upcoming schedule as we have an opportunity as well. And there you see it. Plain Edge, Floral Park, Wanta, and that Chaminade game as well. Uh, they've played an incredible non-league uh, schedule this year. Um, a little bit of uh, daylight ahead of them, but that's a big one on the 13th, that Riggs Rock game. Plain Edge and Wanta are both having good seasons. They'll, they'll give uh, Manhattan a game, but I think Manhattan got a little too much for them. And then we'll quickly show you before we start up here, Garden City's upcoming schedule as well. They've got Southside, Herricks, Mepham, and Long Beach. So things again for Steve Fennell's side as well, who have played an incredible schedule. They went out to Texas, um, which was interesting for him as well, right? Because he played for Mike Pressler, then he coached against them as well. They lost both of those games by a goal out in Texas. A lot of one goal games this year and right now as luck would have it, the Trojans in another one of them right now. Well, I think the coaches of both teams are very willing to play a very competitive, not only schedule, and not worry about losing. You know, and, and, and the, the goal, eye on the prize, is to be, be a champion at the end. You have to challenge yourself in those non-league games and, and, and play good people and see and learn from it. Win, win or lose. And here's Mondiello. Gunsey's doing a good job right now. Still two minutes to go in the game, so they're trying to single the ball right now and just try to create ball pressure from the single. They're going to have to get the double team on eventually. Came out of the box. Look at this. So off the turnover, here comes GC with an opportunity to tie things up inside the final two minutes. Will Fennell... I don't think he's called a timeout this half, has he? And there he goes. And Fennell will call the timeout. So right now it looks like, you know, they're going to talk in the huddle a little bit. You know, Garden City is probably going to need two plays. They're probably going to need a play against man-to-man -man and maybe a play just in case they come out and play zone or change the defense up. Uh, we also wanted to mention here uh, our condolences to the Coglin family. Um, Ellen Coglin, this is just yesterday as well, uh, lost her life. Her husband, Frank, runs the Manhasset PAL. He organizes and manages not just lacrosse but all sports under the PAL umbrella in addition to being the PA announcer at their home games. And Ellen uh, passed away just yesterday at the age of 67, survived by sons Kevin, Francis III, William, and a daughter, uh, Alice as well as a granddaughter uh, Maeve so our condolences also go out to the Coglin family we also want to let you guys know today's game brought to you by the Manhasset Lacrosse Parents Association the MLPA wants to thank the Manhasset Lacrosse community for their continued support and generosity which makes broadcasts like this possible So we'll see you. Garden City is going to see where, where the, you know, uh, the obvious down by a goal. The obvious thought is, can we can we get Stevie Fennell freed up to, to get a shot? But there maybe there are other players here. Maybe the secondary matchup might be a better matchup than just going against their best defender on your best player. So here we go off the timeout.
What does Fennell have drawn up here? Try to create space for, for, for Fennell right here. Here comes his son, Stevie. Overhand shot and Fennell ties the game at eight. Sometimes the best lacrosse is the easiest lacrosse, right? We overthink stuff, we overcoach stuff sometimes. And, and maybe it's just give the ball to your best guy and go to the goal. They do a great job creating space. And Hassett was a little late to slide there, and Fennell makes him pay. This guy has a flair for the dramatic. We showed you the overtime winner last year in the Woodstick. He scored the fourth overtime winner at Ward Melville earlier this year. And now he ties the 139th edition of the Woodstick with 126 left in the fourth quarter. He is him. <laughs> <laughs> he is that guy. It's awesome. So here's Gerard off the faceoff win. I believe Manhasset has no timeouts left and Garden City, they do have one remaining. So if you're Manhasset, you gotta decide, you're just gonna play here regular stick. Sorry, 8-8, eight, eight. what more do you want right here? Dylan, end of the game, I'm sorry. I just, I'm trying I, to set I'm you up sorry. who might have this one here. I'm sorry. Colin and Peterson with a goal each as well. Who's your guy here, Mike? Who's, who's getting this shot off? They got Connor in, or like a little bit off the ball inside, trying to maybe set him up on a set point. On Does a set he crash play. the net here? Little dunk inside. They got something working off the stack in here. Haggerty. Now Connor goes to the cage. Five seconds. Off the bounce. Haggerty, can he get a shot off? He cannot. And the 139th edition of the Woodstick is going to overtime. Wow. Almost felt like Manhattan needed 10 more seconds. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just had a way. Something's starting to cook a little bit, but he just a little bit more time. It was a little rushed at the end. By the way, these teams, these kids have played each other forever. I want to show you something really cool here. Check this. Check out these pictures here, courtesy of Sean Haggerty. These are the same guys as third graders. You see in the top left, that's Cal Gerard. Do you have third grade faceoffs? Because if you did, he probably won one there. And there you see the top, right? A little bit taller than the other guys. There's Liam Connor. And bottom right, Aiden Haggerty among uh, these group. How cool is that, right? Like, it's, it's really that's cool. how far back this it's goes really for cool. these guys. It's really cool. It's cool. Their parents can have great, man, their parents can have great memories of being together and, uh, and playing this great game that we all love. And uh, it's really cool. And again, thanks again to to Sean Haggerty for those great images. What's more cool is we're in overtime here. Second year in a row. Now a year ago, it was, he's not here of course, and I don't think he can get here in time, and I don't think he has eligibility left, but it was Jack Cascadden winning that face off. Timeout was called at one point, and then the play was called for Stevie Fennell for the winner. But Cal Gerard, to this point, he's won all 18 of the faceoffs that he's taken. So now Cal, the other thing with Cal is you don't want to give him a fast break, right? You don't want to have him call game right now. You make him go back with it and, and, and get a possession, and you, know, you don't want him to go, you know, they have a timeout, right? They have one timeout each in overtime. So interesting to see if Manhasset wins a faceoff, will they use it or will they just try to play through and get their players through substitution? So both teams will have one timeout here in overtime. Gerard goes backwards, wins his 19th faceoff of the game. And look at this opportunity and the goal! The winner, Jack Peterson! And Manhasset wins the 139th Wood Stick Classic. It didn't take long, Dylan. It didn't take long. They won that face off back to Peterson. It kind of looked like Gordon's had a double team on a little bit and he just ran through it. And all of a sudden, the seeds parted and he went for the goal. Watch Peterson here. Once he gets by Malahi, switches hands. A terrific goal for Peterson. His second of the game and one that he will remember for a lifetime. 
tough uh, situation there for Malay. It looks like he might have lost his stick a little bit on the dodge. And uh, the neck, they weren't ready to rotate. And Peterson just took advantage. And that's the greatness of Peterson is, you know, he's, he's been, he's played the role of, of like, you know, moving the ball and, and dodging and probing and doing things and being a part of a six-man offense. And when you really needed him, he came to the forefront as Stevie Fennell did to tie the game a few minutes ago. And somewhat fitting too, right? The guy who wears number 32 scores the goal for Manhasset. Again, Johnny Driscoll wore that number, a 1976 graduate of Manhasset. A two-time MVP of the Nassau Championship game, and, and now it is Peterson, who wears that number, that special 32, doing special things here in overtime for Manhasset. Great game by both teams. Tough in the handshake line. You know, both no, nobody wants to lose this game and everybody wants to win it. And uh, the good news is the season's not over for either team. They got a long way to go. And uh, both teams will hunt championships now in their own classification. But, you know, tough pill to swallow for Garden City. They had, they had a lead and they just couldn't hold on to it. So we'll show as the two teams with the sign of a uh, show of respect here on the handshake line. We'll show you the trophy presentation, the Woodstick uh, trophy presentation. And then we'll also make sure we'll get you after the game as well. We'll take a break to set up the breakout goaltending save of the game. But what a special moment. And as you said, right, like the alums, they don't ask you what your record is this year. Sometimes they don't even ask you if you won the state championship. Did you win the Woodstick? And for these guys, that answer is absolutely yes. Thanks, so right there, number 32, Jack Peterson with the winner. What a moment for Manhasset. They'll pick up their sticks. They improve to 10-0 and on the season. They entered this game, not that it mattered a whole lot, but number three in the country by USA Lacrosse Magazine. The highest ranked public school team in the country. And they will continue to be so, but what a challenge it was. Listen, Garden City, man, it's another one goal loss, right? And what has been a season of one goal games. This is the seventh one goal game in their 11th game of the year, right? You lost to Mount Sinai 9-8. You had a, it was a one goal deficit. You beat Syosset 11-8. Then you beat Ward Melville in four overtimes. You beat Radner from PA 7-6. You beat Cold Spring Harbor 4-3 as well. And then you had that trip out to Texas. You lost to Highland Park, and you lost to the Woodlands, both by a goal there as well. So another one-goal game, a one-goal loss for Garden City. Um, but I think what we're seeing, and Steve Fennell, Ted, you know, we're still learning, we're still figuring things out. You know, they're set up for success in May and June, and there's no reason to think this Garden City team can't make another one of those runs. Absolutely not. What you got to remember is Manhasset's really good. And they, and they lost to him by a goal in overtime. We saw Manhasset put, you know, blow up Darry in Connecticut. I mean, who's a really good program, and they have some really great wins, Manhasset. So if you're Garden City, the fact that you hung in there with them and you went to overtime and you lost is a great sign of progress. Not the sign that you're not good enough to get something great done. I think I, you know, I look out the other way sometimes. Yeah, Garden City 7-4 and four now on the season, and Manhasset a perfect 10-0. and oh. Both teams a year ago, again, showing what these teams are made of. They both won state championships. And there you see it, that terrific Woodstick award that goes to the winner. A year ago, it was the guys at Garden City walking it off at Manhasset with Fennell scoring the winner. And now Peterson, uh, a little bit of revenge for his boys. And it looks like Peterson, he's like, is, it, is there a... Is there a Presentation here? What am I doing? I want to take this thing. I want to celebrate with the boys. Just kept keeping pass from one to the other. Looks like you got the cap into Garden City right there. How class is this, the trophy. huh? It, it, you know, not easy. Not easy to do stuff like that for, you know, for young men to do that. But, you know, you, you watch the guys in the NHL, right? The NHL playoff hockey, they, 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 those guys kill each other for seven games up to, and they shake hands and have respect for each other. And this is awesome right here. Yeah, this is an incredible show of respect. As you said, it's the seniors and the captains – of Garden City, they will hand this award off to Manhasset after this incredible battle. 
Well, that's what makes it. Imp- that's what makes the game important, is the fact that you do that. You know, you make that part of it, right? That's what makes it important. And there you see the celebration for Manhasset. Let's not break that one, boys. We need that one again going forward. Uh, but again, this is the game on Long Island that has the tradition, right? It is the game that you circle on your calendar. And addition number 139 goes to Manhasset in overtime. And that is a celebration and now a picture that they'll no doubt take. We'll show you that picture as well that they'll remember for a lifetime. Well, I think what makes the game game number 139 so special is they played 139 times and both these teams have been really good at this point for a long time. And it's not coming to an end anytime soon. And, and the fact that they're both so good at it makes the game so important. Imagine if all of a sudden one of them wasn't good at it, the game wouldn't have as much meaning, right? You but see how quickly they got in the formation? They, they, they've done they've this done before. This, yeah, they're, 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 <laughs> they're, they're a little experienced this before, yep. Yeah, they've, they've, uh, they've had practice. Yeah, they knew exactly yeah, yeah. who's going next to who. <laughs> I'm going to ask Coach Cromwell for the second in practice where they, uh, they do photo <laughs> taking like that a little bit. Is that before stretch or after? So we'll take a quick break to set up uh, our final segment of the game, our breakout goaltending save of the game. Manhasset, the 9-8 win over Garden City in the 139th edition of the Woodstick Classic right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Since 1989, Arena Graphics has been a leader in producing the finest quality custom screen printed and embroidered uniforms and apparel. Specializing in serving schools, clubs, small businesses, or large corporations, Arena Graphics can help you promote your image on wearable apparel and other promotional products. Ask us about setting up a team or business web store for easy ordering and user-friendly fundraising options. Search us on the web at arenagraphicsny.com. Arena Graphics, your gear starts here. And you see more pictures being taken. Now this is where you break it out, right? Seniors come together. <laughs> the juniors. The cousins. I don't know. They're not going to want to get on the bus for a little while. That's all we got. Yeah, to... why, why would you, right? Outside I mean... the picture off to the, to, to the left of the screen, if you turn all the way over to where the, the fans are, there's a, a massive group of uh, Manhasset fans waiting to see their, uh, their sons, their neighbors, their friends, all different people uh, come off the field. But it's going to be a fun bus ride back to Manhasset. There's no doubt about it. So, again, uh, breakout goaltending group. We've got the save of the game here. And uh, there you see it. Breakout goaltending group. Terrific goaltending um, training, all levels. Uh, boys, girls, um, from the youngest right on up to, to this level as well. College as well. College players as well. So we'll show you the breakout goaltending save of the game now. And a lot of good ones today, Mike. We'll go here to, this was the fourth quarter, right? And watch Fargione. Oh, that's a really good one. Well, what makes it so good was that, you know, he controls the rebound. But before that, you have Mondiello just get to the middle of the goal. And defensively, you don't want to shoot him looking at this even six by six, but he comes up for that save. So again, breakout goaltending group.com. 877 goal 121 for the breakout goaltending group. We want to show you one more time our upcoming schedule as well before we finish up here at Warren King Fields. The upcoming sports cast schedule here for the, well, this is our Sweet 16, a bit right behind St. Anthony's as well. And Chaminade behind them. Again, that's going to be a lot of fun. Chaminade and Manhasset, that's part of our upcoming schedule here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Hopog has climbed that list after some big wins as well. The Dalers are right there. And here we go. Upcoming schedule. Again, Farmingdale and Syosset coming up midweek. And then we go to Cold Spring Southside on the 5th. That'll be Friday night from, uh, I think it's Darcy Field. And then it's West Isla at Bayport Blue Point. The Dalers and the Chiefs, and then Riggs Rock. Uh, that will be at Chaminade this year. Year, and then it's East Islip and Shoreham Wading River, rounding out our broadcast schedule. Of course, you always want to hit that subscribe button on our YouTube channel and follow us on our social media handles at Varsity Media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. So that'll do it here from the 139th edition of the Woodstick Classic. 
and it has been a classic. Manhasset wins it in overtime for our executive producer, Ben Turchin, for our technical director, AJ Nieves, Nick Costi, coming back with assisting uh, the directorial work of AJ. Guys, bringing you all the moving images as well. Mike Verdi, Travis DeLuise, for my broadcast partner, Mike Hunger, for Dylan Butler. Thank you for joining us from Garden City. And we look forward to seeing you next time right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network.